Hey, Ryan here, and I'm back with the continuing test, the Iron Mountain Armory uh, Tose Gosoku uh, armor, which is the new style armor from around the 16th century in Japan, the mid 16th century. So when they got new steels uh, from the West and they started making much lighter armors and went to new styles of armor making, uh, instead of the Karuda or the uh, Lamellar or the scale type plates that were laced together, uh, and went to a full solid dome. Uh, we have the solid dough today. It did well against the Neolithic weapons or the Stone Age weapons, if you want to say Stone Age caveman weapons, or either tribal or islander weapons. I mean, they do get used throughout history, and they've been used for hundreds and thousands, or well, thousands of years, actually. Uh, today, we're going to be visiting the Bronze Age, which is like the time of Achilles and Troy, uh, which this now too here is something that he might have used. It's from around the right time period. Something that Achilles could have favored with his uh, shield. Uh, we also have a Middle Age bronze spear. These are both by Neil Burridge. I'd like to thank Neil Burridge for these weapons uh, we'll be testing today. I'm going to use the uh, now two on the Kabuto uh, for our first test. And I'm going to be using the spear uh, much like they would have used as a javelin and a spear during uh, the time of Troy, a Bronze Age spearhead. Uh, and I'll also be using a Bronze Age spearhead to represent the time of the Spartan. Now the Spartan had iron, and I have an iron sword here that's basically iron. I made an old wagon wheel iron, I know how accurate it is to complete, uh, uh, let's say, uh, historical iron at the time. But it is an iron sword, and these two swords are very, very similar in some ways. We'll be testing this on the Kabuto as well. A disclaimer on these swords, especially the very sharp Spartan sword, uh, this would be used in niches. Even for them, they wouldn't have tried to just stab through a bronze breastplate. What they would have done is they would stab in areas such as uh, under the armpit, in these areas. Uh, up under here, if you notice the video I did a long time ago where I was comparing the Spartan to the Samurai, uh, Marquez was playing the Samurai, and uh, I stabbed in here. And he called it, oh yeah, you got me. Because this is basically cloth inside the thigh here. That's why they added the Hadate to make it safer. Uh, other than just having this here, uh, but it allowed you to uh, have more protection to the thigh, and you got your knees protected, so we have pretty good coverage here, but that would be where you would aim for, so anybody out there that's a major Spartan fan, an early Greek Poplite fan, uh, no, they weren't stupid, they would have aimed for niches if they were fighting this man, but today we're testing the steel, so we're going to be testing the uh, dull, and see if we can penetrate it like we did with the other weapons in the last video, and we're going to be testing the uh, Kabuto like we did with the Shillelagh or the uh, Native American War Club, basically, uh, to see how well the Kabuto protects the head. Let's get started now and see what happens. This is an important part of the test. Uh, historically, we know that uh, Europeans a lot of times wore arming caps. Uh, we even hear some stories of uh, ancient warriors using their hair as an arming cap. And the uh, chalmage was a uh, the top knot or the uh, actual piece of hair that comes over, much like you see on sumo wrestlers modernly, but now it's a flary hairstyle. But what would happen is wearing it in court and stuff, it would kind of be put in a position like this. And this was actually their hair that came out of their head. But in this situation, it's for battle. This would be pulled over like this, kind of like a mohawk or something pulled across the top of your head. But this provided an enormous amount of padding. Since uh, our Ivar Draugr head here has no uh, hair of his own, we're going to give him his own uh, red uh, chanmagi. Uh, and we're going to take our uh, tachimaki, which is a headband, not like in uh, uh, the Karate Kid, but more like a kendo practitioner would wear. This is a bit uh, light cloth, lighter than they would use. But I'm going to put this over the actual head and try to get it on here properly. And this is gonna come back and secure our chanmagi and help protect his head from damage. This is a very important part of our testing because the helm has a cloth liner like most historical helms do and helps hold the helm from your head like strapping wood. But we know that padding aids tremendously. This head's been tested, I'm not gonna lie, with another weapon, uh, the bog axe and through another helmet it actually cut through that helmet and into the head so hopefully this is going to give him lots of protection uh, and we're going to start off with a very brutal weapon we have our hachi here or our dome uh, we have our minpo uh, minpo yorari means uh, face armor we have our 
uh, Hannah, Hannah, or Cody, or uh, Shikiro, our Fuchigachi mom here, and our Fuchigachi. So we have the whole helmet. That was an amazing test in our last video where we actually test a shillelagh style club that could have been used by any culture, tribal, uh, Native American, uh, Islander, uh, and that would be later century that the, the Japanese could have possibly even encountered someone doing that. I mean, they did that in the Philippines where they first ran into the Filipinos and fought against stick weapons, and they had ironwood. So I'm sure that uh, they could have possibly uh, gotten hit with something like that sometimes throughout history due to their dealings with the islanders and so forth. So not only is it something that we did that's Neolithic or ancient, and any man could make that weapon, they still use them themselves as the uh, rare bow. But today, we are going to be testing stuff from the Mycenaean and the Aegean Age, uh, and we're going to be testing ancient Greek and Spartan style swords. So we'll have a Xiphos, and I have a Now 2 here. The Now 2 uh, is a, a type of Bronze Age sword that was found. This one's made by Neil Burridge. A lot of people think bronze can't hold up to steel, but we've proven you can cut through steel if it's uh, mild steel or unhardened steel, uh, with the actual edge, because it's hammered and hardened. Although the core is softer, uh, bronze is much heavier than uh, much heavier than iron or steel for its, its uh, actual size. So this has good mass to it. Uh, it's not like a uh, Wheelberton or a uh, uh, Ewart Park. Uh, it's not primarily for cutting. So my disclaimer here is I'm going to test this on the uh, Kabuto, but we are testing the actual metal itself. We are not exploiting niches or gaps. I'm not going to try to stab into the eye with it. This is more of a thrusting weapon the way it's designed, but it's a good all-around weapon. The now too, you can cut with both edges. You can, uh, it has a good weight to it, like I said, but a lot of times it's better at thrusting. On this uh, particular Kabuto, there's not a lot of areas to thrust at. Uh, as for cutting the uh, Shikoro, uh, it has the, uh, and the Fukigashi one are right here, so if you try to cut, there's the stop. Uh, it has the visor, which is, actually gives it a double layer of protection right over the brow, which makes it extremely difficult to damage, and then here is the Maizashi. Yeah, so, no, we are not aiming for gaps or niches, we are just going to use it. Uh, as a bronze sword, which I'm very curious what's going to happen, uh, and see if we can cut into the actual hachi or dome of the helmet, which is made out of one piece of metal, like it would have been on the uh, Tose uh, Gusoku, as it is a Tose Gusoku, when they started getting better steels. Let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and uh, attack as if I was using it with a shield. I do not have the proper shield for the Bronze Age. It would either be a Bronze Age shield or probably a high covered shield with a bronze boss or center grip on it, much like a Viking Age shield. So I will stand as I'm using a shield, and I'm going to go ahead and cut in this area. I'll try coming in right out here. Oh! Well, he lost his cut. Uh. Our bronze sword did not bend at all, nor did it damage the edge badly. Remember I said the edge is harder than... Uh, harder than most steel. So we actually have a cut, which I say a cut, an actual crease in our helmet like if we had hit it with a, a, steel, uh, a steel sword. Let's put his... Uh, no, it's back on. No. Hannah? It's a Hannah or a... Hannah. Hannah? Nasal? Sorry, I might have called it a monitor or something. It's a Hannah or nasal. Uh, but this is a nice cut. Well, I wonder if that actually did anything to him. And this is a hefty sword for the sharp edge. And if you look, the edge is dull slightly because it did hit steel, but not badly. It's still fairly sharp. Let's go ahead and look at this. And it shouldn't have done much to his head with the padding underneath from his hair. Or from his fake hair. Yeah. We shall see. This is part of the fun. Yeah. Does it look as bad as the, as the actual... Uh, club or the uh, cudgel, the uh, shillelagh? No, no, but I'm going to have fun matching this paint later. Oh, yeah. I'm going to say that the dent's not even that deep. I don't think it even hit his head. I don't think so. We can look just to see. Make sure that something didn't happen that's very strange that we're not uh, aware of. But 
It was no. on this side, and uh, no, he's fine. I not a thing. Shit. The only thing we have is our wound that was already here. Not nothing. And that was from different testing. Different testing. You will recognize my aspis uh, from or my hoplon, whatever you want to call it, uh, Spartan shield that I made that weighs the exact weight of the Vatican shield. Uh, we've tested it in other videos to see how devastating it was, comparing it to Deadliest Warrior and punching things with it and uh, all sorts of things. I even fought with it in a video. Uh, but today, it's just here because I'm using a Xyphos that was made for me by a good friend of mine who works with metal named Scary Larry. Uh, he used iron that he got from an old wheel that should be iron. It's not hardened in any way and it's got a good edge. The only way the edge is hardened is from beating on it a little bit and working with it it's it's not actually it's, it would be like an early iron age blade uh whether the spartan's blade would be this exact quality i'm uncertain but uh it's not finished out totally it doesn't have a beautiful hilt on it or anything but the edge is the exact length that many spartan would have used to thrust around the shield as a backup weapon they weren't using it so much as a uh, copus to cut with but it was a nice fat blade and had a lot of mass to it for the short size and it's probably more of a thruster like a gladius uh, but today uh, like i said we're not exploiting niches i'm going to try cutting into the head with it and see if this produces any different than the now two the now two was extremely impressive it did not bend on the metal helmet uh, it actually seems to have scored the metal which is actually pretty uh, interesting considering it's bronze and it has a hardened edge neil burge did an excellent job on that blade uh, but let's go ahead and try this out and see what happens. This is the same blade we tested in the old video for comparing the same thing, pretty much. A Spartan versus Samurai. Samurai. But I'm using it with a shield. Hope everybody can see this. I'll probably come in an area we didn't hit with the other one and hit right over the top. Oh! Nice dent, but uh, I don't know if our Spartan would have known about the... Uh, Chanmagi, uh, he would have known probably that there was more padding there than anywhere else. But I came in and gave it a nice dent, but I think it ate up most of the material. We'll see how badly damaged our uh, samurai is. How bad does it look, Lass? I can't tell. There's too much light on the screen. Okay. Well, you need to. Uh, I'll be able to tell after, but get the I just can't off. see the screen. Yeah, ugly. take the kabuto off, so to speak. I don't think his battle's over though. Hope everybody's enjoying the theme test, having it kind of like the old days uh, when we originally did Viking versus Samurai and all the different videos. Uh, but we actually have armor to really test now and see how it behaves. And this is actually actually the gauge of many museum pieces. And as a museum replica to that degree, it's been based on many finds, or actual shouldn't say finds, but out of collections, because Japanese armor was usually passed down through the generations and not found on the battlefield somewhere like it was in the Viking Age. Not too bad. It looks about the exact same as our bronze for the size of weapon it is. Mm -hmm. uh, as for being in the inside, I don't think that would even hit your head if you weren't wearing all this. So it's almost not necessary, but for the sake of testing, we have to look. I would say there's no damage whatsoever. No, nope, no damage. He's fine. His okay. uh, Chomangi helped him greatly in his uh, uh, Hachimaki, <laughs> even though it might be a Western Hachimaki because we're from Texas. Bandana. We want to be as scientific as possible uh, and fair. Uh, so what I've done is I've got the dough uh, right here on our mannequin. Some of you might recognize Lola or Valkyria or uh, Valkyrie. Uh, it's a mannequin, uh, it is a female mannequin, but we've got it set up in such a way this time where the gel protrudes more. Uh, we've actually got it where the gel cannot move around inside and get damaged just by the actual shell of the mannequin. Uh, and on top of that, we have proper clothing under it. We have our uh, akama, and then we have our kimono on top. But to further add to this, what we've done is a lot of times there would be a silk uh, obi that wrapped around the body, much like the sarashi underneath the armor. So this mannequin actually has that over the uh, kimono. It's wrapped around and around, kind of acting like Gambeson in a way. It helps reinforce areas where the dough might make contact with the body at the bottom. Because you see it's domed to keep it away from the chest in case something were to slightly pierce it, it won't injure you. 
but over our analog ballistics gel that's in here, our jelly belly as I could like to call it, uh, which is a, a hardcore gel, uh, probably about 20% gel, uh, it should give us an accurate uh, account if something does go through if it actually wounded or injured our uh, samurai. Much better uh, than the one we did our debunking video on where they had just a straw or a stuffed uh, sand mannequin or something that was very ragdoll-like. Uh, it is tied. I'm not using a proper sarashi on the outside. I'm using one that's more of a shell one. I'm hopefully I don't hit it, but I've got it to help secure it to our post. It can give and move. This is not solid as most people would think, you know, something solid, you know, you just put up against a tree and try to shoot uh, arrows into it or are thrusted. Uh, no, this gives, and it could possibly get knocked loose, but I doubt it with a tide. Uh, hopefully, uh, our uh, samurai today holds up well, and we're going to mostly focus on this area right here. This is where the actual ballistics gel is in this area, uh, and we're going to see what happens in, in the uh, dull, uh, dull area here. Uh, we might do a little testing on some of the other stuff, but this is a mannequin, so these are not proper analogs. So the main focus is to test the metal itself, the steel from Iron Mountain Armory, and see if it can hold up to all the weapons that we will be testing today. Ah, I figured I would go all out for this. You knew I would. I have a uh, bronze breastplate on. I've got greaves on. Uh, and I'm pretty much dressed the part. I'm dressed as a Spartan. I've got a little bit of red on here. Uh, and I'm going to be doing the time of Achilles, like uh, Troy. Uh, the stories we see in the Iliad, which were much later century than the actual account of what took place, speak of thrown javelins. And we have our bronze spearhead set up like a thrown javelin. Uh, no, this shield is probably not the type of shield that would have been used during the time of the Iliad. It's based on the uh, Vatican find. It weighs about 16 pounds. It's made out of oak plywood because I didn't make it historically accurate in every single way, but it has the weight, the shape, and it's here. Mostly here for aesthetics because it makes me feel good to have a shield. Uh, but we're going to start off by throwing the javelin at the actual breastplate, which I think it has a good chance of possibly piercing it, if possible. And the reason why, uh, we've actually pierced a uh, European, 15th century European breastplate slightly with it. Was it enough to kill the man? No, but it was able to poke into it. So a thrown spear, a javelin like this, might have a chance of poking into the actual armor. And after that, I'm going to set up the head uh, as if I was going to be fighting with an aspis during the, the time of the Spartan. And uh, we shall see. We'll do the overarm throwing slide and see if I can make it through the actual uh, the actual breastplate itself. So let's get going and see what happens. And I'll tell you, we would have hit niches, but we're going to be hitting metal today. Keeping to the accounts of the Iliad, uh, supposedly Achilles and the other famed warriors would ride by on a chariot and throw their spear, uh, sticking it in an opponent and then retrieving it, jumping off, retrieving it, and rushing back to their chariot. Or they would throw the javelin, and sometimes their javelin was meant so much to them, their bronze javelin, they would go into the fray and fight to retrieve it. Well, a lot of times their javelin supposedly got these true kills at a distance. They would throw them and kill a man outright, they would go through his breastplate. We're not sure this will happen today. This is a steel breastplate. It is a dull a Japanese breastplate, but we're going to throw it in honor of Achilles, and this is very much like a spear he could have used, a Bronze Age spear, a Middle Age spear. So let's go ahead and see what happens. It's set up on a javelin uh, setup, and it can also be fought with like a spear as well. I don't have the proper shield for this time period, so I'm just going to throw the uh, javelin as if I was going to try to give it all I got and hit him right in the center, center uh, mass where the ballistics gel is. Hit off, way off. We have a puncture, but he is not dead. Let's look at it real quick. It did puncture it. It went in about a half of an inch, but we did get a puncture through the actual metal. Like I tell people, thrown is actually more powerful than, uh, but that's not over the ballistic shell, so let's try hitting over the ballistic shell and see if we can get the same result. We might only have to do with that angle. And this hit where a hole already existed, pre-existing punched hole, uh, where it's tied. So that doesn't totally count.
We have another hit and a penetration. Still oh, it never reached the actual mannequin itself. You can tell it didn't hit anything. It uh, only went in about a little less than an inch, about three quarters of an inch. So it's about three quarters of an inch in. Would have scared him, but he'd still be alive. If it would have hit the double layer though, where the, there's this much metal overlapped, I doubt it could have penetrated it. Yeah, I shall try the overarm throwing slide. That can be done to get more reach and then brought back. Or it can be done with just full force reaching out as much as you can push forward, which is not actually letting it slide through the hand, but just throwing it out at your target. So let's go ahead and see what happens. Uh, after seeing the throw do that, throws usually do more damage than actual thrust by hand. So we may not get as much penetration, or we may get more. If I hit that double area, because that got lucky and hit an area with no double uh, plating, both of them did. And one hit where there was already a pre-existing hole. So let's go ahead and see what happens. I hit high again. We got the exact same penetration, but I actually went through the double layer. And it looks like we got the same thing. This is not enough to kill the man. It's only about three quarters of an inch. I know that looks nasty on that plate, but that's only about three quarters of an inch. I wish I would have aimed a hair lower, but it's really hard to aim at somebody's belly when you're I don't think it even cut the cloth. We'll look and see though on this. We definitely need to check it. That puppy is after this time. All I can say, all I can say is I did say that. Deadliest warrior, we might not be done with you yet. In theory, this man lived. This is good armor. But just like I pierced the 16th century breastplate, which is much thicker than this and heavier, which would slow you down, I was still able to pierce this as well. So uh, I think Certain plates did get pierced historically, and our ancestors were not lying when they stated this. They just stated that no one died, or he bled a little bit and lived. It's because it wasn't very deep, because they were trying to go through armor. Let's see, we've got to look exactly where it hit over. And uh, there's no holes in the cloth whatsoever. Nothing whatsoever. And the gel's right there, so one of them hit directly over the gel. That would be the um, slide. This one is directly over the gel. So if we want, I think it would be worth it. It didn't go through the cloth, but it'd be worth looking at the gel real quick. But somehow we can get in here and look. Nothing to the no gel. Damage. And it sticks out as far as her breast. Just a little bit push. less. Just a little bit less, but it should have hit it if it was going to and damaged it. But it wasn't able to go through the actual cloth of the kimono. So I say it's good armor. That would have stopped the yachty. Uh, do I think a Yachty would have went as deep? Uh, unless it was a thrown Yachty, or, or unless the Yachty uh, was a uh, Kudo Yachty, which is a sliding spear with a, a special design to get more speed, I doubt it would do this well. Certainly hope you enjoyed this episode of, uh, set in antiquity. Uh, we actually proved that even a bronze spear head or javelin uh, could pierce even later century armor, like I have done once before in other videos. Uh, I didn't quite expect that much penetration, a little bit more than I expected, but not enough to kill the samurai in any way. Uh, I think he was totally safe the entire time. We didn't even damage our gel over the gel. It wasn't even able to make it through the cloth. Uh, it did pierce it. Uh, I'm very impressed with Neil Burge's uh, bronze spearhead, and I'm also very impressed with Iron Mountain Armory's armor. And as always, if you uh, are interested in the armor, you can go by Iron Mountain Armory, www.japanese-armor.com. Uh, and use the product code THRAND to get a free gift or a discount. Uh, our next stop is going to be the Viking Age, yow, which is the age of the, the Vikings up to the age of the Normans uh, when they came in 1066 uh, and took over England with William the Conqueror. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed our episode, and as always, farewell. <laughs>